Hey guys, welcome back. Fast Monty's Garage. Uh, yeah, it's first fire Friday, but it's, yeah, it's Friday. I took the day off actually. So here's the deal. This is Rev 2.0 or maybe 2.5, depending how you look at it. So I've got the engine ready. Now, those of you guys who are curious, what you need to do on first fire is prime your engine for oil. This is an oil priming shaft for, from Butler Performance. I'm sure there's several on the market, but that's what I used. You go counterclockwise. Chevy guys, I have no idea. Look it up. <laughs> the other thing I'm using today is a EMP Stewart thermostat that I put in. It's a 180 degree thermostat. It's customized. It has holes in it. So this time I put all my coolant in the radiator and we're going to see how it works. It should automatically cycle through the engine because it has holes in the thermostat and that alleviates uh, air bubbles when you're breaking in an engine or just day to day. It allows a little bit of fluid to go through the engine at all times. I'm a fan of uh, coolant flow, so to speak. Uh, obviously you need a timing light. Um, I already uh, pressurized the fuel system to see if there's any leaks. Nothing else is leaking yet. So uh, let's jump on the cockpit and uh, see if we can get her to crank. Oh man, so me she cranks, I warm her up, set the timing and do a test drive after I do another leak check. Be right back. Okay, here we go. Um, I got my Phytec system set up just to see coolant. Etc. Etc. Man, I want this to work so bad. I don't want any issues. <laughs> Got a Pontiac show next week, so I kind of want to get to that. All right, here we go. <sighs> Annoying pump is on. It might take a few. I'm sure it's going to take a few to get the fuel into the throttle body. It's trying. It's trying, it's trying. Almost there. Come on. Oh. Come on, baby. She's alive. She's alive. I don't see any smoke. Sounds good. I don't hear any exhaust leaks. All right, I think our exhaust system worked. I probably should have closed my trunk. I can't see out the back. Sounds awesome. Uh, okay, so RPM, coolant temperature. This is what we have to adjust at some point. I have a video on that. But I'm just worried about operating <laughs> and no leaks. So I'm gonna let it warm up some more and then check the timing. Uh, and we'll be right back, hopefully with a test drive. I have to check for leaks too, by the way. Oil pressure, yes! All right team, time for a test drive. I already have the engine warm. I'm actually struggling with the controlling the heat. I suspect it's that um, high flow thermostat. So I'm going to keep a close eye on it. Luckily, um, the Phytec unit has the coolant temperature on it. So I don't have to rely on my analog gauge. 
which is a whole nother subject we have to talk about in a future episode. Anyway, uh, I'm also having a hard time starting it, so that might be a Phytex hitting I have to look into. Let's do this. started <laughs> so I changed the setting and uh, I'll review that later um, basically it's the crank setting I added more fuel so that worked now let's uh, temperature is 165 and my issue is the thermostats 180 and I noticed it got up to 205 and didn't change so uh, I'll monitor that on the drive but we also have to test our transmission Let's do this. So far, so good. Clutch disengage is really high. Um, might have something to do with that 140 thou measurement we took. But I'll definitely uh, give that some more thought. But so far, Nice and smooth, baby. Yes. Coming to a stop. Idle's dropping to 900, 800-ish as planned. It's gonna take it easy. I have to break in the engine, with break in oil for 100 miles. Transmission and clutch still need 500 miles of break in. You don't wanna go crazy. So as you guys know, it's not easy to take that in and out of the car. So I'm gonna monitor the temperature, we'll be right back. So definitely running too hot, it's like 210, 215. Um, I, don't, I think it's that thermostat, I'm gonna just swap that out and get home. Back to my 160, see if it behaves better. Not, not happy about that. Nice go. Oh, thanks. Other than that, it's feeling super strong, so I can't complain about the performance. It feels awesome. I do smell some oil. Could be remnants from me touching the headers or whatever, but we'll put it back on the rack and see if there's any leaks. That's the drill, right? So uh, I didn't have any leaks during the warm-up session in the garage, so that was actually kind of a, a miracle in itself. So I'll check it out, let the engine cool down and uh, think more about this cooling issue. Oh yeah, so I got the car in the lift. There are no leaks. Uh, I'm frankly blown away because there's always something leaking, tiny drip here or there. Nothing. So I I'm gonna pat myself on the back. Yeah, because uh, that's astonishing in my opinion. Um, so a couple notes, a twin disc clutch test. I didn't really talk about it during the driving because I was focused on the gauges and everything, but um, it grabs super fast. I cannot imagine when you put a massive amount of torque to it, it's probably not going to slip at all. So that's going to be fun once we get everything broken in. Um, the cooling comment I made, I've been thinking about this because I've started to think about the gauges. The, the, the stock gauge uh, with the sending unit, is separate from the sending unit from the Phytech system. They're both reading different numbers, drastically different numbers, like 40 degrees off different numbers. So I took my laser gun out, measured a couple spots, and it's in the middle. So that means the Phytech gauge is reading a little high and the stock gauge is reading low. So I've convinced myself that I need to get mechanical backup gauges. So in a few episodes from now, I'll probably start that process just because we need, a, I, I want a backup. I want the real number, not something that is close. Uh, the other thing is the oil pressure, to, to put another backup oil pressure gauge instead of relying on the stock uh, sending unit gauge, which is fine. I mean, it was reading 80 PSI the whole time. Granted, it's not fully heated up and it will drop a little bit. Um, but hey, I think that's a good um, plan of attack for future videos. 
uh, but the immediate video that you're going to see is we still need to talk about that M.E. Wagner PCV valve. Remember, it's customizable. You can tune it for your engine. And I made a comment earlier that I could smell some oil. Well, that is one of the signs that a PCV valve is sucking too much oil. The valve's not set up yet, so it's fully open. It's sucking a lot, so that makes sense that I'm burning oil because I haven't tuned the gauge yet. I'm tuned the valve yet. So that'll be our next episode. We'll go ahead and go through the procedure on how to install that and get that working correctly. And then I have a Pontiac show to go to. So subscribe if you haven't because I haven't filmed a show in a while. I'll get some, get, hopefully check out some cool cars, do some interviews or something like that. A little bit uh, a break in the action from the how-to stuff. But man, thanks for hanging out, guys. I know I covered a lot, uh, at least just now. And uh, until next time, you guys know the drill. Build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.